Hey guys, Dr. Ben here, F8 Well Centers. Excited to talk to you today about uh, a lot of information that's been coming out recently in regards to uh, the, the COVID virus and all the things that, that uh, people have been talking about, that we've been talking about, and really information that can help guide us down the road. And that's all we've been asking for this entire time is uh, what is actually going on, where the facts are, you know, nothing from the politics of it, nothing from the uh, um, you know, I think this is it because, you know, money or whatever it is. But now we're actually able to uh, to jump in and see some of these statistics, see some of these facts, see some of these truths. And uh, and, and that's the fun part. You know, they always say uh, the, the uh, seeing that, that vision um, afterwards is always 2020. Um, so, you know, is it, is it not? Well, let's jump into it. A few of these things. Love having you guys on. Um, pop down below where you guys are watching from all over the country all over the world let me know how things are where you guys are at let me know how uh, if you're in a different country or a different state uh, what are the hospitals like how how is the situation in those places you know people love to get this information and it's a great community that we have here that we can go step by step with people and and really um, build build each other up and get each other the support that we need so love having you guys on Stephanie great to see you there um, and uh, Carol, video keeps freezing up. Uh, let me do this. All right. Um, I just uh, I just took it off the um, uh, off the Wi-Fi there. Hopefully that is better. So let me know if if the uh, Mine's not freezing. Okay, awesome. Uh, all right, guys. So he, here's what we're looking at. Uh, hey, Vanessa, great to see you in uh, in Crater Lake. We love Crater Lake. Uh, I remember one time we were snowshoeing up there, and we were uh, with the the park ranger, and there was like a tree this tall, and they said, uh, "You know what? That's actually like a 20 foot tall tree. <laughs> the rest of it is under snow. So it's a it's a crazy place." So here's what we're looking at. A couple of the big things that really have come out in the last few weeks weeks are in regards to the PCR test. Unfortunately, the PCR test was not very good when it first came out, and it's still not very good right now. And there's a couple reasons that have come to light in regards to the PCR test. Number one is that the PCR test, they did too many cycles. Their cycle threshold was too high. What does that mean? Well, um, they run, they, they take that blood sample and they, they run it through a cycle, they run it through a cycle, run it through, through a cycle, each time you run it through a cycle, you're getting more and more sensitive. So, uh, you know, anything over, and I've seen reports of 25 to 30, somewhere in that range, anything over that, and a lot of these labs were running 38 up to 42 cycles, anything over that 30, 32 cycle, you're going to be picking up a whole lot of who knows what it's too sensitive it may just be you know little molecules that aren't even you know they're fragments that are not a true virus a true infection so number one was that pcr test was way too sensitive so we were getting a lot of false positives positives i mean maybe somebody had an infection but it was so mild so little uh, material in there Hey, Joni uh, in West Virginia, great to see you, and Jamie in Cleveland. Um, so, uh, you know, that PCR test, the cycles were too sensitive, and so we were not getting good data for a lot of this. And so, you know, really hard to tell, you know, what these other waves of, of COVID were like. Uh, number two on the, on the PCR test, this just came out in the last couple of weeks as well, is that the PCR test, um, it's not good. This is why they, they're saying that... Um, you don't need a, a retest to go back to, to work or anything like that, a negative test, because for a PCR test, it can be up to 12 weeks uh, that somebody is still positive on that PCR test after they are done with that infection. So what does that mean? Well, if you are um, uh, if you, you have this virus, you're ready to go back to work, or you get stuck in Mexico, and they're like, oh, you, you, know, you had COVID in the U.S. two months ago, and you're coming back from Mexico, and you do a PCR test, you could still be positive, even though there's no way that you're still 
contagious in a way that you still have this going on at all. Uh, hey, Peter, great to see you as well. Love having you guys on. Uh, pop down below any questions you have, any comments, as well as where you guys are watching from. I'll give you a shout out if I see it come up. Um, so the uh, the 12 weeks, so how many people, you know, what this comes down to is how many people would go to the hospital for a knee replacement test and still have COVID PCR positive tests from previous, or, you know, they, they had an infection and they're going in for something else. So that now we know that that data is all skewed as well, but we know that the PCR test is not a very good test uh, and it's actually giving us some inaccurate information. So uh, that's when they really started shifting. Uh, they started saying, hey, we need to do some other rapid testing. Unfortunately, the rapid testing is not 100% either. Um, and, you know, um, there's there's a lot of new players to the game. It was this, you know, I, who knows how much they're even charging. I think the government has basically said, you know, we'll write you a blank check. Just get us get us tests. You know, think about it. That We just, as a government, said, hey, we want a billion tests you know, it, now that, that uh, it's pretty darn intense, you know, how are you going to make that? Unfortunately, quality control is probably going to go down. Some of the companies aren't going to be as good as, as they should. We've been involved in, in this for years with supplement companies and a lot of different things. So there's really good ways to do things and some not so great things to do things. Um, hey, Marianne, uh, Berlin, and I assume that is Germany. Good to see you on there as well. So PCR tests, not a great tool. We've known this all along. Now that's finally coming out. And they're like, well, we're just going to move on from it. But, you know, didn't really address that the whole, all of the data, all of the stats are going to be a little bit skewed from that. Um, another one that came out uh, where the research is showing that social distancing really doesn't play a big role in preventing infection. Uh, yeah, there was a, a report where whether it was six feet or 60 feet, you know, still those, those germs are going to spread around. And really that social distancing was a pretty big myth uh, that that did not um, that did not really uh, come come to fruition as being this oh my gosh you know six feet has anything to do with science it really didn't it was just a, a quick easy easy thing to think about you know distance away from each other etc um, cloth mask this was something that you know if you remember walking around the, the grocery store or anywhere else people wearing bandanas the little buffs I'll, I'll be honest I probably Probably did that a few a few times as well. Um, you know, any cloth mask. Uh, the research now is coming out, and as well as CDC and other other people saying that a cloth mask really doesn't do much of anything. It's it's you know kind of a, a uh, virtue signaling going, hey, I, I'm I'm at least trying. But you know, CDC now is saying wear the highest thickest mask that you possibly can get a hold of that you can afford that you can uh, comfortably wear, etc. Everyone I know that's been tested recently has tested uh, positive. Symptoms are all completely different. Yeah, interesting. Six feet is the same as sixty feet in terms of transmission. Yeah, uh, Stephanie, we'll post that. Um, we'll post that that article up there as well. Uh, hey, Michelle in Virginia, good to see you. So uh, we know that uh, that cloth masks are really, really just there for show that if somebody truly wants to prevent, um, you know, much, much uh, viral exchange, you know, that uh, unfortunately it is that N95. I just went to the bank the other day and they gave me an N95 mask, um, you know, this like dollar fifty mask, right? You should go to the bank every day, start, start selling those. Um, but we, we, what we know is that um, a cloth mask is really, uh, not going to do much of anything and you know a lot of these kids are going to school with that on and if anything these cloth masks are bacteria magnets so you know they're getting moist if you're like this all day and to just do that and you can feel moisture on your hands. You can feel that moisture. That's going to hold that bacteria. And those things, the research shows you should be changing your mask three, four times a day. We just posted an article. But they were saying, oh, if, if you at least get 40 hours out of a mask or, or wear it for a week, that's going to be fine. And you're like, holy cow, that's just bacteria magnet. So, um, you know, you need, if you do have to wear a mask at work uh, and it is a cloth mask, you need to be washing that at least daily. I, I would bring two or three if, if I was wearing a cloth mask every day. Um, 
but uh, yeah, you've got to make sure that you're you're keeping those clean and you're practicing good hygiene. You know, most people have not talked about mask hygiene. Uh, they've just said, "Hey, wear a mask and." and that's fine, but you know, you're on an airplane, any of these places, and it really does no good. The developer of the PCR test uh, said at the beginning of this pandemic that is not a reliable test. Yeah, um, you know, it, it, it definitely was not. You know, they'll say, "Oh, it was the best we had." Well, don't don't make decisions based off of poor data, and that that's what we're looking at. So, cloth masks really don't do much of anything. Um, you know, so for kids to be wearing those all day long, it, the research is showing that that is not a constructive thing. Um, what we also know is that in the beginning, we were like, you know what? There's people that are going to the hospital that you know are going for a knee replacement. They they broke their arm or whatever it is, and they're they're testing them and getting counted for COVID. And we know with that PCR test, with doing that too many cycles, uh, it is going to um, it is going to build that uh, build that up too high, and we're going to see this positive. Teresa, do you believe a healthy person needs to wear any mask? Uh, you know that that's uh, that's a, a in depth conversation more than we have time for here. You know, there's certain environments where um, you know, it, especially if uh, if this what like think about this if Omicron was. Uh, you know, as as deadly as they thought COVID was going to be, and it's as contagious as it, as it is. I'm sure a lot of you guys out there know people right now that are infected. Um, you know, then uh, then it could be like, hey, give me a bubble, give me you know something there if I'm out and and you know in the subway and standing next to people and they're sneezing on you, breathing on you, everything like that. So you know, could there be some protection for somebody wearing that mask? And uh, you know, they especially in '95, that little electrostatic uh, catching some of those those germs potentially. Um, you know, but for a healthy person to you know be wearing a mask to prevent uh, spread, I'm not sure. Um, you know, uh, as far as that go, um, can mild or asymptomatic COVID cause or worsen autoimmunity? Um, I, you know, what we've seen with autoimmunity is that people that get COVID, and, and I don't know about the severity of the case, we haven't been able to track that, but some of our patients after having COVID have had an autoimmune flare. And what that does, that virus is going to really rev up um, that immune system and has that potential to stimulate it. What we also know is that Epstein-Barr virus, the, um, the, uh, the monovirus gets reactivated in people after they have COVID. And so it definitely can be a big part of uh, Epstein-Barr mono is a huge part of autoimmune. So we know that that can be part of it as well. Um, let's see. Rochester, right, Kristen. Um, yeah, getting some snow. Uh, unfortunately, in Colorado, we're not getting snow. We only have about 12 inches total. Our Nashville offices, uh, they've got about 20 inches of snow so far this uh, this season. They're actually got more than we do here in Fort Collins. Um, how long is the infected contagious? Uh, you know, what we do know, and that's that's up for debate. Some, you know, the CDC keeps changing things. Now they say five days and then mask for five days. Um, but what we do know is that the more overweight and unhealthy somebody is, the longer they are contagious. So think about this. Uh, there, this was a study done back during the swine flu, and what they found was that people that were overweight and obese versus lean people, they shed the virus for twice as long as somebody that was lean. And you know, not all lean people are healthy, but in general, um, you know, that that overweight person has more inflammation than somebody that's lean. So what they found was that uh, if you're overweight, if you're unhealthy, you're actually going to be twice as contagious. You're twice as long shedding that virus. So if anything, we have a personal responsibility to take care of ourselves and be as healthy as possible, as opposed to, you know, just wearing a mask and social distancing and still drinking our Coca-Cola and, and McDonald's and all these different things. Um, you know, Heather flared up your Hashimoto's. Yep, we see that. Um, so, uh, you know, will will land me in the hospital? So, 
Uh, this is what we see. Actually, um, the people that have autoimmune, I've actually seen COVID have less of an effect and be less uh, challenging for people that have autoimmune. Some of that is because that immune system is so revved up in the first place. And so it's able to, to attack pretty quickly. So uh, I, I would not say that just because you have had the virus um, and that that's going to uh, really kick that up into um, the flare that autoimmune up. Hey, Michelle, um, you have personal responsibility. Uh, how's it uh, proven that a vaccinated person has a milder case with vaccination? Um, I think what they're going off with the, the research there, Tammy, is that they'll take um, you know, people that, that are in the hospital and uh, and check their vaccination status and then say, okay, this uh, this percentage of the people that, that were vaccinated or not vaccinated and, you know, are having a severe reaction or not. So uh, I, I'm assuming that's how they're doing it. I really haven't seen any great studies. You know, a lot of it is just kind of, um, you know, they, they make they make statements, but um, I, I don't know. I have not been able to see any direct research related to that. Um, so again, hospitals are counting a lot of people that have uh, have COVID, um, but it, they're going to the hospital and they are going with COVID as opposed to because of COVID. Uh, Dr. Fauci just said this about children as well. We're seeing kids that their numbers are not that high, um, even though uh, uh, the Supreme Court Justice Sotomayor, she said 100,000 kids are in the hospital right now, and a lot of them are in ventilators. Totally not even close to being true. She got fact checked big time on that one. Um, it's like 3,200 people, kids were in the hospital at that time. And most of those, Dr. Fauci said, uh, went for something else. Maybe they were in cancer treatment or whatever else. And they uh, they tested positive um, at that point, just going in. Hospitals are testing everybody that goes into the hospital. Unfortunately, there's financial incentives um, if, uh, if somebody is positive and, and they're able to build more and, and get more money off of those. So, uh, hey, Darcy, good to see you. Um, Trinity, I haven't been diagnosed with autoimmune disease, but have felt for years I have one. After COVID, my body hasn't been the same. So here's what you want to check for, Trinity. You want to check ANA, you want to check rheumatoid factor, and you want to check your Hashimoto's antibodies. We run those on every single patient, um, and whether they think they have autoimmune or they diagnosed or not. And we catch a lot of people that were not even aware they had autoimmune. If you're having a hard time getting those blood tests run, um, pop us a message down below or send us a DM and we can talk to you about drop shipping that test kit anywhere in the country. And, uh, and we can get those results back, review with one of our FA doctors and tell you exactly what you have going on. Inflammation, thyroid, autoimmune, fatty liver, blood sugar, all these different things. Um, and is elderberry, elderberry still considered a course of cytokine or a cause of cytokine storm? Um, Donna, you know, elderberry, you'd have to be taking a whole lot to really drive that cytokine storm. So, um, you know, if you're just taking a, a teaspoon a day or whatever, probably not a big deal. I don't think that's going to, um, yep. The PCR tests have been, um, uh, good to see you, Patricia from Montana. Um, my daughter is a nurse and was tested twice where she works after she got sick and was negative, went to a bigger hospital, went to the ER and was tested a third time, still negative. She was admitted to the ICU and was treated for COVID. Fourth test finally showed. I've heard the PCR tests have been discontinued. Yeah. So unfortunately, testing has been just such uh, a foobar part of this whole thing. And now we've got a billion tests that are going out. You can order them free. Uh, it won't be here for two weeks, but um, you can order them for free. And, uh, and then we can figure out, okay, where, where do we go from here? Um, so unfortunately, a lot of these companies are not going to be making the best quality products either. So again, um, they, we, we've talked about the PCR tests and too many cycles, talking about how it can still be positive even 12 weeks afterwards. That's why if you're going to Mexico, you got to have a, a doctor's note saying that you did have an infection because you could test positive. If you, if you do a PCR test down there, you could test positive even 12 weeks later and be stuck. You have to quarantine for a week before coming back home. We saw that social distancing, uh, 
uh, six feet or 60 feet really didn't make that much of a difference. We saw that cloth masks were pretty much junk, you know, moving up from there um, to just a regular, uh, you know, the, the kind you get at, at Costco or, or Home Depot or whatever that say, you know, these are not intended for medical use, anything like that. Those don't do much of anything. And really, you know, if you want to do some prevention and you want to um, protect yourself potentially, an N95 would be about the best way to go about doing that. Um, but again, how long can you do that? All those things. So all of our kids in cloth masks, unfortunately, are, um, you know, they're not doing much. It's just really for show and they're actually potentially, you know, getting a lot of bacteria. A lot of these kids are not, um, you know, washing them appropriately. They're, you know, snotting their nose or whatever's going on. They're pretty yucky. Uh, we know that hospitals are counting too many, um, uh, too many people because they test everybody. We know that the tests aren't great. We're getting some false positives, but also people are going to the hospital not because of that. And that's, that's come out of the CDC. Um, and Dr. Fauci have all said that. Are you seeing health people start being sick a lot after having COVID, like COVID is affecting the immune system? Um, I, I've seen both ways. I've seen some people that uh, they're like, man, I haven't been sick a year and a half since I've had COVID. And then other people, um, it's kind of revving up that autoimmune as well. Hey, Trinity, yeah, give us a call anywhere in Canada um, for these tests. Uh, Julie, um, shoot us a direct message. I'll, I'll get a hold of our lab and see if we can drop ship to Canada what that looks like, okay? Um, had COVID pneumonia hospital nine days, home on oxygen. I also have MTHFR and can absorb B12. I asked my doctor for B12 injection. Haven't been on oxygen since the B12 shot. That's great. Um, I, I've got a, a friend. He just had one of the mobile um, IV places come over this weekend. He tested positive for COVID was pretty beat down. He had the uh, Myers um, extra B12. He had uh, an extra shot of vitamin D. And I mean, he said within a couple hours, noticeable, noticeable difference. So um, if you if you have those, um, yep, Julie, we're going to check on that. Uh, how long do the antibodies show? Lucy, um, antibodies are going to um, uh, we've seen, and people on here can comment as well, but we've seen 12, 14, 16 months that antibodies are still there. My wife is over 13 months and still has antibodies. So, uh, you know, it's great. We've seen, um, we've seen those antibodies last a long time. Um, uh, yes. Uh, so Michelle, drop us line. We can talk to you about that, um, and drop, drop in that blood kit to you. Um, vitamin D and COVID, heard most people sick were depleted in that. So it's not definitive. I've had doctor friends, I've had people that I know that had optimal vitamin D and still got sick and still had to take a week off work and were kind of run down, et cetera. Um, but in general, the research is showing that uh, the lower somebody's vitamin D, the more likely they are to get sick, to go to the hospital, to have a worse infection, and to potentially die. So vitamin D, a big, big part of that. Um, you know, we, we've seen that over and over. Uh, and Jane, great to see you. Um, so remdesivir, um, you know, I, I have not seen that it makes it worse. What we have seen, you know, it puts a lot of stress on the kidneys, livers, and things like that. Um, but I have not seen specifically that it makes it worse. Um, I had COVID on August 3rd, and three weeks later, my antibodies were 400 on the quantitative test. I had it done again in November, 90 days out, it was 2,000. What does that mean? Well, Michelle, your body is continuing to make, make these antibodies. It, it continues to build up. I'm not sure what, what the, the reference range of the lab that you were um, doing that in is, but uh, you know that, that makes sense. You, your body will continue to build those antibodies, and at some point, it'll peak and then start coming down slowly as well. Um, I will be getting tested this afternoon, felt really bad. Um, Saturday with headaches, body aches, low grade fever, did all that by Saturday evening. I was feeling so much better. I thought I was okay, but I have cough, still tempered on 100. Really more curious than anything. Plus, I have been around some people. Really, kind of looking forward to natural immunity. Um, if you live in a in a metroplex, uh, search any type of IV uh, IV vitamin therapy and see if they'll come to the house. We've seen that really helpful for people to jump out. Um, and uh, 
Um, is there any way to help get your taste and smell back to normal? Mine is still way out of whack. I can smell and taste, but I know they aren't the right smell and taste. You know, so some of the things that we're looking at, zinc, uh, high dose zinc, you can do that. Other people, it's because of the inflammation over that, uh, over those nerves going down to smell and taste. So really loading up on that anti-inflammatory process, uh, turmeric, fish oil, uh, a lot of different nutrients to get that inflammation down because uh, there's a good chance that nerve is inflamed. Um, mobile IV services were a lifesaver uh, for a loved one with COVID this past fall. would definitely recommend it, absolutely. So just Google those in your area and that will be great. Um, Yep, my grandson now has type one. He got it after COVID. We have several friends that their kids are now type one after COVID. What's going on? So again, um, anytime somebody gets a viral infection, it can drive the immune system. Some people they'll get not just COVID, but other types of viruses and they'll get skin reactions. They'll get this um, immune flare, hives, all types of things. But absolutely the, that spike protein can for sure drive autoimmunity and it can make that immune system go haywire. So uh, unfortunately, Lori, um, type one is very tough to, to reverse, um, but don't, don't let them just be told that, well, eat whatever you want and dose it accordingly. You can keep that blood sugar really, really consistent, even on a type one person and, uh, and, and insulin dependent, and they can, they can stay within 40 points very, very, uh, easily. So let us know if you got any questions on that. Monica, great to see you. Um, Kristen Mobile IV, which you, would you recommend? Yeah, I, I would do uh, you know, Myers Cocktails, great. That's got a, a wide variety of different ones. Um, the B12 would be good adding if they have like a D, uh, D3 boost. Um, I, I don't know of a specific protocol for that. I have not seen, um, seen one on like the frontline doctors, anything like that. Um, uh, CJ, still, still metallic taste. Yeah, try zinc, see if that'll do it. Um, uh, if you have antibodies, are you protected against Omicron Trinity? Uh, you know, that is a great question. We don't know all the answers on that. You know, if, if you look at, at, you know, headlines, they'll say, you know, the vaccination or prior infection are not protecting as much against Omicron, you know, but go ahead and, and uh, make comments down below, guys. If, if you have had a previous uh, COVID infection? Are you are you getting infected with this this new variant at this point? Um, you know that that that's what I would go off of what you're hearing from people because really uh, I don't think anybody knows in the research yet. They haven't haven't uh, completed a lot of those studies yet. Uh, Tossi, uh, I have celiac. I'm two months out from COVID. Took ivermectin. I'm just fine now. However, I'm expecting um, some DH in spots. Uh, do you think the COVID infection stirred up the DH in my system? Um, you know, it, it, it could uh, it could definitely have done that. That spike protein. We don't know exactly how that plays out in the body, so uh, it may have contributed to some of um, some of this flare that you're seeing. Remember, celiac is autoimmune. Um, I would check your thyroid antibodies as well, your TPO and your thyroglobulin, and that would be good. Uh, yeah, uh, Janie, lymphatic system was compromised months after COVID. Um, can you explain why the mass makes my pulse rate double? I'm asthmatic. So uh, a couple things. Some people, it's an emotional thing where they get uh, anxiety, anything having on, on the face. My oldest son, he's 17, he can't wear it. It's, you know, gags him because I'm choking. It, it just it isn't possible for him to wear a mask all day. Um, and uh, so what, what's happening, it, it could be the emotional side, but it could also be that you're not getting, um, getting oxygen like you need to. And so then um, your body and heart rate is trying to, to pump faster and get, get more oxygen around the body because you're not getting as much in. Um, does it depend on what type of mask you wear? Yeah, uh, so Kim, Kimmy, um, yeah, NAC can be helpful as well. You can try that. 
So how does COVID affect cognitive and general stroke similar damage? Um, so you know, I have not seen specific research on post-COVID and, um, and cognitive decline. What I have seen is that uh, you know, there is long, long haul COVID, COVID long haul, whatever you want to call it. And in the majority of those people, they have a reactivated Epstein bar. And we know that long term chronic uh, mono is going to contribute to cognitive decline, contribute to just that fatigue and all those things. As far as the general stroke goes, I have not seen that um, specifically in the research or with patients. Uh, but you know, let, let me know if you're, if you're seeing any friends or family, anybody that you know with that. Uh, so Michelle, I've got a friend really struggling with balance issues post COVID. Any thoughts? I would look into, um, is it some type of a uh, reactivated Epstein-Barr virus? So you would wanna check lymphocytes, you would then see if those are high, you would wanna check white blood cells, see if those are low, see if those, um, uh, those viruses reactivated in there. It could also be an inflammatory process that we're getting inflammation in the brain now. So, um, you know, again, coming in with some high dose DHA, uh, getting blood flow to the brain, doing some more, uh, more exercises where you're, you're even some hip type exercises, but be careful if she's having balance issues, you can even get on that stationary bike and do some sprints in there and pump oxygen to that brain. Um, so Nancy, we've already answered this one, but zinc, um, somebody else said NAC, and that's another good one as well. Um, Portugal population, uh, 10 million given booster third and fourth out of infection with COVID. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we're seeing, and, and that could be Monica uh, with the Portugal population. Um, it, it may be that, that Omicron is getting around those vaccinations. You know, that's what some of the research is showing. Linda, good to see you. Carol, uh, long time no see. Hope you are well. Um, you're welcome, Kristen. And... Um, uh, got it back in June, took months to get it back, but it's all just wrong. Laugh a lot. I was, uh, I will try anything at this point. My old favorite tastes and smells are just awful. Uh, yeah, that's, that's no fun as a neighbor. Um, uh, yes, Sharon, metallic taste can also be from your body detoxing. Um, sure. Uh, you know, I haven't seen, you know, liver enzymes go up post COVID infection. We, we run blood work all the time on patients and, um, and so, you know, really not seeing um, that, that it's a toxin issue at this point. Uh, Darcy, good to see you. Um, how do I find the information on your diet while you are ill with COVID? I have so many friends that are sick and they're just munching on anything. They can grab cheesecake, little Debbie snacks, and Dr. Pepper. I can't get them to understand that you don't want to throw your body off. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, we've got to keep that blood sugar as steady as possible. Even when we're in an infection state, that blood sugar is going to swing and it's going to spike a whole lot easier. So you've got to double down. And that's where, you know, just uh, you know, the old old standbys of, of chicken soup, you know, chicken broth, uh, not the noodle part of it, but just um, broth and soups and and veggie soups and veggie bras and all those things are going to be really, really good. Keep that blood sugar as steady as possible. Um, all right, guys, I've got to jump. A lot more questions on here. Um, I'll, I'll have uh, Brittany run through and answer as many of those as we can. Love having you guys on. For those of you that have questions about the blood work, um, send us a DM and we can talk to you about what that process looks like. So uh, stay strong out there. You know, just stick with what you know works. You know, the news, the, the media, the CDC, everybody, it's going to fluctuate. Sometimes this works, sometimes that works. Uh, yeah, and yet, Go with what the you know your body works well with. Go with the the old tried and true things that help the immune system, and you're going to be much better off day in and day out. So love having you guys on. Stay strong, and we'll talk soon. Take care.